Welcome back to the next chapter in the Siemens KNX basic course, the chapter about KNX bus topology. The term topology is used for the structure of the KNX network, which will be explained now in detail. Again, some terms and their abbreviations used at times in this chapter. BC equals backbone coupler, also referred to as area coupler. LC equals line coupler. DVC equals device, equal to subscriber. LR stands for line repeater. PS slash CH equals power supply with integrated or attached choke. S equals brightness sensor. RC equals routing counter. This graphic shows a kind of minimalistic general overview of the pure twisted pair structure, including all possible hierarchy levels. Without specific requirements, you always start with line 1.1 in ETS and assign the bus devices that you insert to the first segment of this line. In each line, a line coupler can be inserted, here yellow marked to link up this line via the next higher level to other equally designed lines. Also, this level, the main line, has couplers to the next level above. They are the backbone or area couplers. All area couplers are linked with each other via the backbone or area line. If no other solutions upwards or parallel are possible, lines can also be extended downwards. For this extension, a so-called line repeater is required. Three line repeaters per line are permitted, connecting the same number of line segments to the first one. Addressing device number limitations and the disadvantages of line repeaters will be explained on the following pages. Now let's have a look at the smallest unit in the topology of KNX, the line segment. For one, the wiring limitations apply as we have learned them in the chapter KNX installations. On the other hand, as for the devices, the following limit applies. The maximum number of subscribers or bus devices must not exceed 64, including all connected couplers. Each line segment also must be individually powered by means of a specific KNX bus power supply unit with integrated choke, green in this image. Please bear in mind that the given limit of devices per segment cannot always be reached since the power consumption of them may exceed the capacity of the supply unit. Referring to the chapter KNX installation again, you can reinforce the supply situation on the segment by the use of a second power supply. In this case, you must also heed the installation rules of the chosen manufacturer. A word for advanced KNX users. In the beginning of KNX, the limit figure of 64 named the bus devices also TP64 devices. But for a couple of years already, the so-called TP256 devices are on the market. The figure 256 means that you can operate up to 256 on one galvanically joined segment if their consumption is met by the supply and no TP64 devices are present. Almost all Siemens Gamma Instabus devices meet the TP256 specification today. You can check the shown direct link to the Siemens technical support for further details. For the basic course exam, however, if statements about the maximum number of devices per segment have to be evaluated, use the 64 figure, if nothing else is stated by the examiner. If a line segment with maximum 64 devices is not sufficient for the intended project specification, or the power consumption of the devices is greater than what can be provided by one or two power supplies, 
more lines have to be created. Limit it by the addressing scheme, up to 15 subordinate lines are possible. Each of them operates independently, as it mandatorily requires its own KNX power supply. To make them communicate with each other, they are equipped with line couplers. These line couplers are connected to another line, the so-called main line. This complete structure of sublines and one main line is called area. All limitations valid for line segments apply also for the main line. That means not more than 64 devices and a separate suitable KNX power supply. The rules we learned in the chapter installation still are correct. Two lines can be powered by one supply if a separate choke is used for each. So if we try to figure out how many devices can be operated in one KNX area, we end up at 1009. This is 16 by 64 minus 15 couplers. The couplers count twice as they are connected to two lines. Now we are back to the complete network. What is true for the lines is also possible with the areas. You can design 15 areas within a KNX world. These areas also can be connected to each other by means of a superior line, which is now called area line, or as already named, the backbone. For this line also a power supply with integrated choke is required. The maximum number of subscribers in such a system is now 15 by 1009 plus 49 equals 15,184, since also area couplers count twice. Theoretically, you can now also extend each subline by three additional segments of 63 additional subscribers. Multiplicating these additional figures makes 225 by 63 equals 42,525. Altogether, it makes a total figure of 57,709. But in contrary to the use of line and area couplers, repeaters are not unproblematic in operation. The reason for this is their lack of filler functions. More details on that later. Perhaps you wonder why main and area lines have no repeaters, as the addressing scheme would allow this. Well, here for practical reasons it is simply not permitted to do this, although ETS has no limitation in that point. Even 64 subscribers can produce more telegrams than good for a main or area line. Then imagine what would happen if you end up with repeaters on such a line without any filter option. The topology described so far requires a suitable subscriber addressing scheme. KNX has a 2-byte or 16-bit long address for this. It is split in three parts, assigned to area, line and device number, in this sequence from left to right. It is called individual address, also sometimes physical address. You could call it the Christian name of the subscriber, Inside a project, it must be unique. It is not allowed to use it several times for various bus couplers in the same system. Compare it to your own physical address. Your day of birth, place of birth and your Christian name are unique on the whole world. They resemble your private individual address. We return to the KNX and start now on the right side with the bus device's address in a line. It is 8 bit long, which enables 256 different numbers. So you can now also see the reason for the limitation to 4 segments of 64 devices each within a line. Next following we have the line's address. It is described by 4 bit, so 16 lines can be created. One of them, 
that one numbered zero is the main line. Finally, the highest level of the KNX hierarchy is described by the area's address. It is also 4 bit long, so we find the explanation for what we have already learned. 15 areas plus 1 area line. Again, the interconnection line of the areas has the number 0, including the line address 0. If you spend a closer look at the area lines addressing options, you can see that it is possible to create lines also outgoing from the area line, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. ETS doesn't lock this out, but for the sake of a clear tree-like address structure, such lines shall not be used. Moreover, because they can also cause a lot of additional bus traffic on the area line. By the way, individual addresses are only important during commissioning phase or for maintenance purpose. For in this phase, ETS must access each subscriber individually to parameterize or analyze it. In the regular state of operation, the individual address has no significance since this communication is managed by group addresses. And although individual addresses must strictly follow the intended topology structure, for example, the address 1.2.34 cannot be assigned on a line not equal to 1.2, there is no restriction as to which individual address a certain type of hardware must have although some would-be experts think they must establish even rules for that. We have seen this network structure already. Now we also see the concrete individual addresses as they would be used with it. All regular bus devices on the sublines have addresses with each part greater than zero. Subscribers on the main lines bear their area number plus line number 0 and a device number between 1 and 255. On the area line all devices individual addresses start with 0, .0. .0. Regular devices also have numbers between 1 and 255. 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0 is a special address. We will talk about it later. What is a line or a backbone coupler and what are its tasks? Well, they are like border guards of the KNX system. Their task is to check all incoming telegrams at first if they are valid at all, but secondly and more important if they are allowed to be forwarded to the respectively other side or if they have to be denied. Later we will also learn the parameters which are responsible for the filtering behavior. To filter telegrams which are directed to individual devices using the individual address as target, the coupler uses its own individual address as reference. For group telegrams, ETS calculates a filter table which needs to be downloaded to the coupler. By means of this filter table, a coupler can judge if a group telegram may be forwarded or blocked. Here you see the schematic design of a coupler. It makes a galvanic separation between the two lines it has to connect otherwise. To achieve this it uses either small converters or optocouplers on both sides. The power supply comes from the primary line only. In the center you see a controller which works like a small border crossing between two countries having only a single lane. There are parking lots for telegrams, usually called buffers, for all telegrams which have to line up due to high traffic rates if the street across the border is jammed. And moreover, all telegrams must be checked first before they can pass to the other side, like the passports you have to show when crossing borders during your holidays. So the KNX bus works like a single track railroad. Trains can either come into the station, which is the coupler, or they can leave it, but not all at the same time. 
The buffers in RAM serve for preventing the coupler from losing telegrams if there are high traffic rates. The filler table is stored in a flash ROM memory, so it can't get lost at power interruptions on the bus. When looking at the picture of the coupler itself, it has two identical wiring terminals on the front, side by side. Make sure not to mix up primary and secondary line connection. To repeat, we see the individual addressing of the different couplers in this table once more. At this moment, you should notice that couplers disregarding where they are used are always based on the same hardware. If they filter and how they filter depends for one on their parameter settings and on the other hand on their individual address. Now a small quiz at the end of this lesson. What is the address of the line coupler of line 6 in area 4? Answer 4.6.0 What is the address of the area coupler of area 13? Answer 13.0.0 Could the individual address 2.3.127 also be a coupler? Answer Yes, it could. It could be a line repeater in line 2.3. Describe the function of a device with the individual address 14.2.0. Answer. It is the line coupler 2 in area 14. Describe the function of a device with the individual address 9.0.0. Answer. It is the area coupler 9. Connecting several lines in a distribution board. If you have a KNX plant with several lines, you must have a place where all couplers of one area are interconnected. This is most likely the main distribution board. Make sure to keep a clear separation between them, especially when also regular subline devices are operated. Put one coupler on one mounting rail only. In the picture, you can also see the main line. It only has a power supply, top rail. Which bus devices can be used to interconnect bus lines? Actually, it depends on the medium of the backbone. The two devices on the left are classic twisted pair couplers. The one space unit wide one has its secondary line connection on the rear as data rail contacts. The same coupler is also available two space units wide, with both bus terminals on the front. In this case, don't mix up these lines. On the right side, we see an IP router. The distinction to a line coupler is the primary side. It is connected to Ethernet as communication medium. This has the advantage of a much bigger data rate on the Ethernet side. Beside this, it provides the same functions like the twisted pair coupler. Additionally, to that it also offers a virtual interface to the KNX, for example for use with ETS. Thank you for having spent your time to watch this video. You have reached the end of the chapter Topology.